Hi, I'm Chuck. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I will take you through the top 5 things you need to do after installing Kali Linux on any platform in order to make it more secure and easier to use. I will also throw in a bonus at the end, so hang in there. Before we dive right in, please take a moment to subscribe, like and share this video. Let's get started. First step is to update and upgrade the system. Whenever you install a new operating system, the first logical thing to do is to update the system. I will bring up the terminal. On the terminal, you can see that the hostname of the VM is Kali and the username is also Kali. To update the system, we will use a simple command sudo apt update and press enter. I will enter Kali user password and press enter again. This command fetches the latest package from the repository and updates the local package index. Next, we need to upgrade the system. I will type sudo apt upgrade dash y. Dash y is a way of implicitly saying yes to all the prompts during the upgrade. I will hit enter. The upgrade command checks for the newest version of the installed packages and upgrade them accordingly. This ensures that the system has the latest security patches, bug fixes, and feature enhancements for installed software. Depending on your internet speed and system resources, this may take a few minutes. I will pause the recording and resume towards the end. We are resuming. For me, it took about 10 minutes to complete the upgrade. I will clear my screen. Next, let's remove packages that are no longer required by issuing this command sudo apt auto remove and press enter. I will enter Kali user password and press enter. I will answer yes and press enter. That's all. Let's move on to step 2. Step 2 is to create a low-level user. Before that, let's secure the default Kali user. If you installed your Kali Linux VM using the VBox and VDI files like I did in my previous video, then you would have used pre-configured credentials Kali Kali. So, the first thing we need to do is to quickly change the default password by using password command. On the terminal, I will type password like this and hit enter. Type in the default password which is Kali and hit enter. I will now type in a new password and hit enter. I will retype the password and press enter again. You can see here that the password was successfully updated. I will clear my screen. Now, let's proceed to create a low-level user that can be used to perform low-level tasks so that we can use Kali Super User only for privileged admin tasks. We will create a new user called Chuck by typing this command add user Chuck. I will press enter. The execution failed. You can see the message here that only root may add a user or group to the system. To resolve this, I need to first become root by entering command sudo su and press enter. That way, I can perform privilege tasks without the system prompting me for password. But I don't like this option, so I will exit from root and continue with Kali user, but I will have to prefix each privilege command with sudo. This is a more secure way to do it, so I will stick with this option. So instead of typing add user chalk, I will type sudo add user chalk and hit enter. Based on these informational messages, you can tell that the user creation is on track. Now I will enter password for the new user and press enter. I will repeat the password and press enter. You can fill out the user information as needed. For this demo, I will just enter chalk in the full name field and press enter for the rest of the fields until I get to this prompt. I will type Y for yes to confirm the information is correct and press enter. I will clear my screen. Next, I will grant the new user access to sudo privileges to be able to perform root actions. I will type sudo user mod 
dash a g sudo chalk i'll press enter let's verify that user chalk was successfully added i'll use this command grep sudo etc group i'll hit enter there you go you can see chalk now has sudo privileges i can navigate to the new user by typing su chalk and press enter i will enter password for chalk user and press enter you can see i am on the home directory for user chalk for now i will exit and go back to kali user i will clear my screen and minimize the terminal we can as well add a user via the graphical interface by navigating to Kali menu up here. I will select settings. Over here, I will scroll down to users and groups and click on it. Over here, you can add, delete or update user settings just like we did through the command line. I will close the window. Let's move on to step 3. Step 3 is to verify that essential tools are installed. The key ones are Python and Git. I will bring back the terminal. First, let's verify that both tools were pre-installed on the system by typing python dash dash version and press enter. You can see that python 3.11 is already installed. Let's verify that git is there too by typing git dash dash version and press enter. You can see git version that is currently installed so we are good but talking about git this is an open source version control app used by developers and many others to manage source code for example you can share your code on your github repository and make the files public that way people can use it and also contribute to your project i will bring up firefox to clone a project from GitHub, navigate to github.com and find the project you want to clone. For example, let's clone this AWS EC2 Spot Labs. You simply need to click on the code drop down and click on the copy icon to copy the link. I will minimize the browser and go back to the terminal. I will clear my screen. We need to change directory to the location I want to clone the project to. Let's navigate to the desktop and type git space clone and paste the link I copied from github. Once I hit the enter button, I expect the project to be copied from github to my Kali desktop here. I will hit enter button now. You can see the EC2 Spot Labs project is now on the desktop. I will bring up the browser just to show you again the github repository from where the project was copied. That's how you clone a project from GitHub onto your Kali Linux machine using Git. Let's move to step 4. Step 4 is to install a terminal multiplexer. Kali Linux offers tab terminal where you can add multiple sessions in order to run different tasks side by side while multitasking. But it can be cumbersome to manage the task in the tabs separately. That's where a multiplexer like Telex comes in. Telex is easier to use. It can split terminals either horizontally or vertically or even both ways. Let's install it. I will type sudo apt install Telex and press enter. I will enter password for Kali user and press enter. I will type y for yes and press enter. I will clear the screen. Once the installation is complete, you can launch the tool by typing Telex on the terminal and press enter. As you can see on the title bar, this is Telex terminal. I will minimize this Kali terminal for now. I will reposition this. With this button, you can split the window vertically by adding a terminal to the right. You can as well split the window horizontally by using the second button and the new terminal will be added below the one that was selected. As you can see here, you can select one of the sub terminals and keep splitting it like this. I will go full screen on the Telex window. I can even go full screen for any sub terminal within the window, just like this. 
and I can restore the window using this button here or even close the sub terminal. There are other terminal multiplexers like console, terminator and many more if you want to try them out. Let's move on to step 5. Step 5 is to install HTOP. HTOP is a nice interactive system monitor process viewer. First, I'll go back to Telex terminal window on the left and issue top command and press enter. You can see all this system information including the CPU and memory utilization by different processes. You will also notice especially at the top that this information are not easy to read for human eyes. That's where we need HTOP to perform its magic for us. Let's install it. I'll close this other Telex terminal window at the bottom right. I will use the window on the right. Let's verify if htop is already installed by issuing the command htop dash dash version and hit enter. I will zoom in a little more. You can see that htop is not installed yet, but the system is also giving us option to install it right away by typing yes. Alternatively, you can also use sudo apt install htop, but since we are already here, I will just type Y for yes and hit enter. I will enter Kali user password and hit enter. Let's wait for it to finish. I will clear the screen on the right. I will issue htop command to launch the tool. You can see that similar information on the left terminal are displayed on the second terminal window on the right, but the one on the right has better formatting and is more readable. You can see it also uses colors. That's the value HTOP brings. I'll use Ctrl Z to stop the processes on both windows. Let's move on to the bonus. Let's talk about Kali VM network. I want to show you the network settings. You can see here that the network adapter is configured in NAT mode, which is the default setting. This is the most secure way to do it because outbound network access is enabled, but inbound access to Kali is disabled. This may be convenient in a home or personal lab. However, if for example you need to access Kali remotely using SSH over the network, this NAT mode will not work. We need to change the network adapter to bridge mode. Making such change will expose the VM to attacks from the local network and beyond. So make sure that your network is properly segmented before you make this change. Before I update this network adapter, Let's see the IP address acquired by Kali VM. I will bring back the terminal window and issue IP address command and press enter. You can see the IP is 10.0.2.15. If I go back to the virtual box and update the network adapter, I expect the IP to change to 192.168.2 IP address range, which is the same subnet the host machine is connected to. Let's do it. I will bring back the virtual box manager and make sure that our color is selected on the left pane and I will click on network. From the drop down, I will select bridged adapter and click OK. If I return to the terminal and issue IP address command again, you can see the IP has changed to 192.168.2.81 as expected. With this, you can use SSH to connect to this IP from your network if you have necessary network permissions on your firewall. By the way, you can also use ifconfig to view the IP information if you don't like using IP address command. Just in case the IP change did not take effect, after updating the network adapter, you can reboot the VM by clicking on the top right corner here and select restart. Thanks for watching, I hope you found it informative. Please take a moment to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so and click the like button. Also press the bell icon to never miss any of my new videos. If you have any questions or comments, please enter them in the comment section below.